Hey guys, it is Coach AP coming at you through the video scope here in St. John's, Newfoundland, Canada. I'm rocking my Tampa Bay Lightning jersey here today. We've got playoff hockey starting tomorrow. We got the Leafs. It is a big group chat of my buddies, a couple of my close friends are Leaf fans. So it is going to be a fun series. And I got my noble steed here, Mia, is here taking in some video here today. So we're going to be talking about fakes today and how to properly fake some common mistakes that people make when they go about faking. And we'll also throw in some examples. We'll throw three examples on how to go in and fake and leave a defender in the dust. This video is brought to you by NL Division X. Check them out on Instagram at NL Division X. And I will put the contact for Jeff in the description below. So if you guys wanna reach out to them for team photos, team videos, individual photos, anything related to sports photography, NL Division X is your company. Now, let's get into the video now and let's talk a little bit about faking and two common mistakes that people make when doing fakes. Mistake number one is they do it without any pressure on them or they do it when there's pressure 15 or 20 feet away. And it doesn't make sense to just fake for faking sake. You want to fake when somebody is in your back pocket, someone's giving you a great deal of pressure, and you're doing that fake to move their stick or move their body or make them think that you're going to the right when really you're not going to the right, you're going to go to the left. So that is why you do a fake. And usually when someone is really, really close to you, that fake will get them to get off the spot just a little bit so that you can make your turn, your glide turn, your punch turn, and get up ice or get into a safer position or create time and space, which is the essence of the game. Number two, common mistakes that people make when doing fakes is they don't practice their punch turns and their glide turns enough before they do them. So they do the fake, it looks awesome, they turn and they don't have any time and space anymore because their back is too straight or their hands are in too close to their body or they pick it up and they, they keep their eyes down for a real long period of time and they miss the best option on the ice, the best passing option. Or they look down for too long and then someone steps up and angles them and, and hits them. It's just a little things like that. So working on your technique before and after the fake is really gonna help you be able to capitalize on what the fake of the purpose of the fake is, which is creating time and space. You wanna be able to maximize that time and space be able to have the good fundamentals so as soon as you turn out you can make a pass or you can chip it off the wall or you can explode up the ice and get to the middle of the ice so those are some things that people they kind of put the cart before the horse so to speak and they'll focus on the fake itself versus focusing on the glide turn to the left and the right practice turning both ways one side generally in generalities is going to be if you're a right-handed shot turning to the left or if you're a left-handed shot turning to right in generalities is just harder for people. And it's just something has to do with often with your hands and your top hand getting in by your body. A lot of people cross their hands over when they go to turn and I'm not really a big fan of that, but we've talked about that in a previous video. So we're not gonna get too far into that, but you wanna make sure that you have the proper techniques of the glide turn and the punch turn so that when you do pick up the puck, you already know what you're gonna do with it and you don't have to think about the turn part you're working in your subconscious mind, you're just thinking about the next play. You're one step ahead of the competition and the best players in the world, they're the ones that use their brain the best. They're usually one, maybe two steps ahead of the competition. Let's talk a little bit about the options that you have and some of the fakes that you can do. There are multiple different types of fakes that you can do, but the most common three, in my opinion, would be the stick fake, would be the eye fake, and would be the toe fake. Now, some people have different terminologies for these and they have you know, hockey jargon, so to speak, but to keep it simple, usually try to keep it real simple for clients and for players that come to our program. Instead of going with real fancy terms, everybody understands what a toe fake would potentially look like, so I try to keep it simple. So we'll start off with the eye fake. And the eye fake is you're just going to, right before you pick up the puck, you're going to look and just open your shoulders up as if you're saying, hey, I'm thinking about making a play to the left. Or if you're looking to the right, you open your shoulders up slightly. People are thinking, oh, he's gonna go to the right because he's telling me that with his eyes and his shoulders. So that way the player that's forcing you might put their stick to that side, which is exactly what you want for a fake. And then you go the opposite way. Let's take a look at an example of me doing it. 
Option number two is the stick fake. Now, sometimes you see some skills coaches go way overboard with the stick fake and they do like a big swing with their stick. And I don't really like that because sometimes when I do a humongous swing, it will throw my body off and my balance and my posture. So I don't really go too heavy on it. If I'm gonna fake, I'm probably gonna maybe no more come up to my shoulder. That's as far as, as I'm gonna come up. Almost I act like I'm gonna take a slap shot or shoot it up the boards and then turn out. So really, I don't like to go really, really overboard. Some guys literally swing their stick across their body. And to me, that just puts me in a vulnerable position so that when I do actually turn after the fake, I'm not really stable, I'm not really balanced. But again, it's something that if you wanna really work on excessive faking, then go right ahead. But I find that over the top, real aggressive stick fake, it doesn't really do much. I, as a defender, I'm not thinking you're actually gonna do anything there. So. It doesn't really worry me in any way. But let's take a closer look at the little fake that I do here as an example. Sit, try to lay it over. Maybe I come in and go like this. And come out. And number three, last but not least, this is more of a pro one. You see a lot of this in the DEL. Um, guy by the name of Alex Kirks, he, you can follow him on Instagram. I will put his Instagram handle in the link in the description here and you guys can take a look at, he posts sometimes the, some of the DEL stuff that you see with guys doing toe fakes and the toe fakes are unbelievable. I really like the toe fake because again, it really sells that, okay, I'm gonna go to the right, but then you flip your toes back and you go to the left. You can really, when you turn your toes, the defender turns your toes with you and then you turn back out. That is really, really difficult as a player attacking you or forechecking you with a lot of speed to be able to adjust to. So let's take a closer look of me doing it. And just a little note of this, you ha again, have to be very good with glide turns. You have to make sure your feet are shoulder width apart. You're on your outside edge of your front foot and the inside edge of your back foot. Take a look. So it would look like this. I come over, I check, I check, I pull the puck away, my head is up. And I come out of there and I put the puck on the side of my body. So if the player that was on me is in this hip, my puck is here, he can't get it. All right, guys, that is it for me. I am Coach AP with my noble steed, Mia. She's a great editor. And we are gonna be back with some videos. We'll do lots of shorts in the future. I'm gonna post some highlights and videos of Quebec Major Junior Hockey League prospects coming up with Q Cup coming up in a couple of weeks time in Montreal. Probably do a little bit of information on there. Check out my blog too at vhghockey.ca. We'll put the link down low. We talk about players. We talk about things you can do for your mental skills. We talk about getting cut from a team and what you should do there. We talk about nutrition. We cover a lot of different aspects on that blog so you can scroll down through it's vhghockey.ca slash news if you want to be particular check that out and i'm gonna